in our Muslim homes you come, you would never see a portrait of the family head, let alone of the girls and their children and the extended family hanging on the walls. In a Muslim home, you will not find idols of Buddha or an elephant or dolphins made of crystals. Why? These are artifacts. These are beautiful souvenirs we bought when we traveled to foreign countries. They don't have this simply because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the angels do not enter a house where there's a statue or a portrait or a dog. I've seen in Muslim countries, youngsters with ponytails, dragging dogs around the streets of the neighborhood. Don't they know that this is forbidden in Islam? It is forbidden, but it's cool, Sheikh. It's cool. Well, this coolness is causing you and your parents a great deal of hasanat. The Prophet says, والسلام, whoever keeps a dog in his house that is not a shepherd dog and is not a dog for hunting, for game, Allah would deduct from his hasanat every day the weight of Mount Uhud. Who among us can afford Mount Uhud of hasanat per day? And this is happening every single day. So a Muslim home does not have these things that go against Islam. And it's not me who's saying it's haram. It's our Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, who we pray every single day that Allah would resurrect us under his flag. We could go on and on talking about the characteristics of a Muslim home. But this is a Friday khutbah and the time is limited if we manage to scrutinize our homes when we go back and check, is my home a Muslim home? Am I living an Islamic life as Allah wills it? Or am I Dr. Jekyll in the masjid, Mr. Hyde, when I go to my home? This is a very important point that each and every one of us should adhere to. We have to walk the talk. We have to implement what we know because this knowledge will backfire if we don't implement it and apply it.